Yo, 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 welcome to Hard Pass. I am your host, Jacques Slade. Today on the show, we've got the beef between Travis Scott and John McEnroe, the Lakers winning the in-season tournament, and the one thing that could make it better, this week's best sneaker release, and of course, we have our Hard Pass. All right, let's actually start with our pick of the week. And the pick of the week is the Travis Scott Nike Mac attack on December 19th. Okay, real talk, our favorite sneaker drop in this week is actually the Nike Job 1 Christmas, which you can find more about over on Heat Check on the main Kusto channel. The reason why we're putting the Cactus Jack Mag attack here is because I want to talk about Nike's attempt at creating buzz for the release. So here's a quick recap. Back in January of 2021, don't forget that date, LeBron James wore a sample pair of the original Mac attack that got people thinking a retro was on the way. This was followed up by Travis Scott wearing his own pair of the Mac attacks two months later in March 2021. When you get two of the biggest names in the Nike roster wearing the same long forgotten classic, it's safe to assume that there are plans for said classic on the way, and that's where we make our first mistake we assumed. While we waited for a proper retro, resale prices for the 1984 OG shot up in price. That's great for collectors, but it doesn't do much to satiate the demand for those who actually want to wear a pair that won't crumble after a few weeks. Then 2022 came and went without a lot of concrete information about a retro. In fact, the closest thing we got to a Mac attack in 2022 was a late December Soul Goods Dunk High collab that apes the design of the Mac attack. That's okay, I guess, but Nearly 24 months after LeBron was first pictured in the shoes, the interest was fading, rightly so. By the time 2023 rolls around, leaks of a proper retro do surface. There's still some excitement, but nowhere near 21 and 22 levels. By the time we get to June of 23, two and a half years later, after LeBron first wore the shoes, we got a retail release of the Mac attack, but not before teasing a Travis collab with the reverse swoosh. Now, let's be honest with ourselves. There was a lot of hope and chatter that the Nike Mac attack, rebranded as the attack, was going to be Nike's next big retro. After years of dunks and Air Forces and Jordan 1s, the Mac attack was a breath of fresh air. Sure, it's a nearly 40 year old sneaker, but I'm guessing 95% of Nike's customer base had never seen or heard about these pre-LeBron and Travis wearing them. If nothing else, maybe it could become a pillar of retro Nike tennis like the AirTech Challenge 2. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. Nike attacks are sitting. The OG colorway sold well, but if you put some effort in, you could still find pairs at sneaker boutiques. New colorways are selling for as low as half off. The social status collaborations? They're not faring any better. I'm not going to say the shoe is a brick because that's highly subjective language that only hype beasts use because they crave that sweet, sweet internet clout, but I can't imagine this is the outcome that Nike wanted. In my view, saying Nike took too long to retro is an overly simplistic take. Yes, they did take too long, but it wasn't done out of laziness. There's a fantastic story over at Sneaker News by friend of the program, John Kim, that you should all check out about how LeBron and eventually Travis came into possession of the Mac attacks. See, LeBron and his team have been trying to get the Mac attacks or something of similar obscurity on his feet for a tunnel walk since 2018 without Nike's help. So when James finally did wear the shoes in January 2021 and Travis acquired his pair the next day before showing it off two months later, it was done without some sort of master plan with Nike to reintroduce the Mac attack to the world. In an alternate universe where Nike was involved, sneakerheads would have been rocking Mac attack retros as early as summer of 2021. But between the pandemic slowing down production and the Astroworld tragedy, a Mac attack retro was understandably the last thing on anyone's mind. Which leads us to today. Mac attacks are on shelves chilling. Great for those of us who want a piece of sneaker history for half the cost of retail, bad for Nike. Travis's collab is on the way, but there's a lot of chatter online that this might be the pair that breaks Scott's magic touch because in their view, a simple reverse swoosh and some cactus jack is not enough. So what does Nike do? They turn to the OG himself, John McEnroe, one of the most polarizing tennis players in the sports long history of colorful characters. McEnroe turned trash talking and complaining to authority figures into an art form. He was perfect for Nike's rebellious image during the 1980s. So why not bring some of that energy to the modern day? And that's the birth of a leaked Zoom call where Johnny Mac is upset over the branding of the shoes. God damn it, Travis. Jenny's right. Okay, let's have a bit of a compromise here. Her suggestion is to do a Cactus Mac thing for this one shoe instead of Cactus Jack, okay? Let's, but, let's but, 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 
But John, John, like, Cactus Mac was never a thing. Like, let a, somebody. Come on, man. Show a little respect. And a man on the street interview that shows up arguably a cooler version of the collab. Ooh. Okay. I saw the video. What's going on with you and Travis? You know, the thing is, is that I was wearing these things in the 80s, okay? Take a look at this now, though. Damn, okay? Before this guy was born. Now, all of a sudden, Travis Scott's got this thing. Cactus Jack, so I just made it Cactus Mac. Not gonna lie, if the Cactus Max turn out to be a one of one made for McEnroe, I'm gonna be super disappointed. But I have to say, mission accomplished, Nike. It's a brilliant piece of marketing that shows they're still capable of doing creative commercials that I wish we saw more often. Ignore the haters online who say the whole thing is obviously staged and cringed. Like, yeah. Of course it was staged and a little cringe, thanks Captain Obvious. It was kind of the point. As expected, the collab sold out immediately on Travis's web store, which means they'll get those shoes around the same time GTA 6 launches in 2025. Now, whether this energy translates to people picking up the GR Mac attacks, mm, we'll just have to wait and see about that. All right, let's talk about the NBA's first in-season tournament and the first winner of said tournament my 17-time world champion Los Angeles Lakers. Yes, they're still at 17 because the NBA Cup is its own thing and not actually a world championship, but being the first will always have a nice ring. I mean, medal to it because apparently you get medals for winning the cup. Uh, by the way, Shout out to the kid who snuck in an autograph from LeBron as he was giving him the medal. Adam Silver was low-key heated about that, telling them to get off the stage. Anyways, what does this actually mean for the rest of the season? At best, it's a jetpack to my team as they try to win number 18 and in the process, become the first double champion in league history. At worst, LeBron blew his load trying to add this to his GOAT application and he'll be exhausted by the time we get to the playoffs. What's most likely is that this was a fun distraction during a really dead time period in the league schedule and is back to business as usual until the Christmas Day games and All-Star Weekend. And we get to add another banner to mock the JV basketball team that also plays at the state. Center. As for the tournament itself, well, pundits are already declaring it a rousing success or horrific bust in the context of how the league is going to sell this as part of their next TV rights deal. And to that I say, whatever. Like, most people shouldn't care about that crap. It's boring palace intrigue that has nothing to do with games themselves. The NBA is not going to go away because an early season tournament failed and it's not going to overtake the NFL because it succeeded. The reality is that it's too early to tell if the NBA Cup is going to catch on or fail like sleeve jerseys. It's gonna be a long process that might take years, if not decades, to really catch on. Thankfully though, most of the players are, have bought into the concept already and seem to be showing playoff intensity in November. The biggest yearly concern of my interest and the league's interest moving forward will be the participants of the Final Four and Championship Games in Vegas. Because as fun as it was to watch my Lakers win the Cup, the 17-time world champion Los Angeles Lakers. If it's, say, Sacramento and Orlando next year, that's going to be rough. Vegas is going to need some combination of LeBron, Lakers, Giannis, Jokic, Celtics, Curry, KD, Knicks, Embiid, and Luka next year to keep the momentum going. No offense to Tyrese Halliburton, who was phenomenal throughout the tournament and is going to look great in Lakers purple and gold in a few years, but he's not a needle mover yet. Neither are teams with rising stars like Minnesota, Orlando, and OKC. To use a wrestling analogy, the Lakers winning the first NBA Cup is like Chris Jericho becoming the first AEW champion. Yes, it would be fun if the first NBA Cup had gone to a team with a superstar in the making, but if the league wanted to maximize their audience, they needed old man LeBron and their signature franchise to win their version of an intercontinental championship. Speaking of championships, the NBA missed a golden opportunity with the medals they handed out to the Lakers. They should have given them WWE belts instead. A few weeks ago, the WWE and the Big 12 recently announced a partnership where they would hand out a custom championship belt to the MVP of their title game. Instead of a trophy and a medal, how funny would it have been if John Cena was in Vegas to give LeBron a WWE belt for winning tournament MVP? Sure, it would have been weird to see LeBron accepting a sentient floating belt, but still, there's so much more comedy potential if we just turn ring culture into belt culture. I mean, 
Championship rings are already getting super gimmicky with pop tops and hidden rings within bigger rings. What's more gimmicky than a championship belt? Imagine the Lakers bringing their belts to Boston to poke the bear a little bit. What if LeBron hid the belt in his warmups during pregame intros and then showed it off as the cameras focused on him? The booze would be merciless, but it'd be funny as hell, which I am all for. So yeah. Missed out on that one, NBA. Should have followed Rasheed Wallace's lead 20 years ago. It's time for this week's Hard Pass, where we take a look at something in the culture that just needs to go, like the Air Jordan 11 gratitude. Shut it down. It's, it's over, everybody. Pack it up. Jordans are dead. At least that's what the comment section of most Instagram posts about the shoes leading up to the release would have you believe. If there's one thing I wish AI would get to sooner rather than later, it's summarizing comment sections for me so I don't have to read every variation of, oh, these are going to be bricks and not resale. Anyways, many believe that this would be the nail in the coffin for Jordan Retros because they are no longer being lined up for or being fought over or reselling for three times the resale prices. They are no longer deemed to be worthy of our time. But if that were true, the 11s would be sitting like Mac attacks. Spoiler, they're not sitting like Mac attacks. Yes, you can still find them in stores, but they may or may not have your size. Online, that's a different story. Most adult sizes are sold out, but occasionally a size seven or eight or a 10 and a half might be in stock depending on when you check Foot Locker or Shoe Palace. I got my pair of Gratitude 11s from one of the shock drops on the sneakers app prior to its December 9th release. Crow Rider reserved his pair via sneaker pass on the 8th while sitting in his car in Little Tokyo. I don't ask why he's in Little Tokyo waiting on me in the studio so we can record Hard Pass, but because he got through on Sneaker Pass, that meant he had to drive out to the Nike store at the Grove the next day. When he got there, the pickup spot was right next to the stairs on the second floor where it was full of boxes of Gratitude 11s in kid sizes. When he asked if people who didn't get the Sneakers Pass could still get a pair, they said no, but they were more than happy to sell the kid sizes in whatever size they needed. Huh. Looks like somebody made a lot of kid sizes this year. But, but Jacques, it's still a brick because it's reselling for close to retail on StockX. And I'm supposed to care why again? I got my pair, Carl Ryder got his pair. It seems like a lot of people were able to secure a pair and if they missed out on sneakers, they can try their luck at physical stores. Meanwhile, anybody who bought them in hopes of reselling or finding out the hard way what happens when they f around with a brick. So I guess I have to ask the question, isn't this what we always wanted? 10 years ago, it was mayhem trying to get a pair of Air Jordan 11 Gamma Blues, a colorway that would catch so many jokes today. Five years ago, you probably had to call in a few favors to get the Air Jordan 11 Concord. In 2021, the Cool Gray 11s was still a hot seller, but not Concord or Gamma Blue levels of difficulty. Last year, wait, what was the holiday Jordan release last year? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Point is, it's been easier and easier to get the holiday Jordan 11 and the Gratitude 11s are the easiest it's been since the good old days of the 90s and early 2000s. It's a good thing. It's what we always wanted. At least it's what I thought we wanted. I guess what some people really want are Jordans that are easily available and can be flipped for triple their retail price. Yeah, and I want to live in a world where I'm hosting a podcast with Jennifer Lopez where we just complain for an hour about people who think our relationship is so wrong. That's hype beef fantasy. The Jordans, not me and JLo, doesn't compute. Maybe we couldn't see it at the time, but this was always going to be the eventual outcome of 15 years of Jordan Retros dominating the sneaker conversation. We still want them, but it's okay that we don't have to fight for them. If you had told me in 2013 that in 10 years, the 2006 DMP Jordan 11s would release with leather instead of mesh, retail for 230 and still be available after release, I would think you were crazy, but not that crazy. And not only that, if the 11s are not your jam, you can buy Cherry 12s. Fear 3s or Royal 1s, no problem. It would sound crazy, but I would be happy with that future. And I think the people who were happy to get the 11s this weekend are happy with this future too. Except for the fact that the 11s now cost 250 after taxes. I, I, I get it, but we complained when Gamma Blues were 200 after taxes in 2013. Rising costs are not just a sneaker problem. So getting worked up about something that we can't control feels like a fool's errand, unless there's a massive boycott, but we all know that's never gonna happen. So 
I guess this week's hard pass is actually going to the part of the sneaker internet who just loves to bitch and moan for clout. They remind me of the people who love to bitch and moan about the MCU for clout. Like Jordan Retros, it's easy to pile on the MCU right now as it's going through a down cycle. And I agree, kind of. The output from Marvel for the past few years with some notable exceptions like Guardian 3 and Spider-Man No Way Home has been mid at best, but that's it. It's been mid. Mid means average, not trash. Somewhere along the way, mid was no longer acceptable. Everything had to be as good as in game or else it was mid, which meant it was trash. But if we're being real here, the MCU has mostly been mid. And when I say mid, I mean average. Like think about all of the MCU films that have ever been. It's a lot, I know. But if you looked at that list of films and TV shows, how many of them were actual transcendent S tier content? The OG Avengers, the first Guardians, Black Panther, Thor Ragnarok, Civil War, the Infinity Endgame combo, season one of Loki and parts of season two? Not a lot, was it? Now think about the stuff that was trash. Iron Man 2, The Incredible Hulk, Age of Ultron, Thor, The Dark World, Eternals, that Sam Wilson speech at the end of Falcon and Winter Soldier. Also, not that many. And then there's everything else. Spider-Man Homecoming, good. The Marvels, mid. Guardians 2, man. All three were a fine waste of two hours that I don't need to think too hard after it's done. And if we could do the same exercise with Jordan Retros, if you look at the past 15 years of Jordan Retros that were not OG colorways, there's only a handful that actually stand the test of time. Shattered Backboard 1s, Dornbecker 3s, Cactus Jack 4s, Off-White 5s. Then there's the dumpster fires that nobody ever talks about ever again. Shattered Backboard 3.0s, Pro Star 5s, Gamma Blue 11s, Gamma Blue 12s, and then we have everything else. CP3 Jordan 13s, good. Cigar and Champagne 6s, mid. Liberty 10s, meh. Literally hundreds of Jordan retros are just good or mid or meh. And that's okay, people. If the complaint was Jordan brand needs to do better by increasing quality and satisfying demand at prices that don't disenchant the customers, I would be all for it. But what I see mostly is these J's suck because their resale sucks. Yeah, a hard pass to that in 2024. All right, that's gonna do it for the show. Thank you guys for watching Hard Pass. I'm Jacques Slade. I'll see you next week with a very special year end episode. If you'd like to possibly be featured in a future episode, call us at 818-493-9325. Leave a short message, your socials if you want, no more than 30 seconds. And then don't forget to check out our heat check over on the main Cousteau channel. We've got the latest of our sticker closet series over on Instagram. And be sure to check out what we've been up to on the socials. It's been a busy few weeks. All right, I'll see you next week. Peace.